so the showrunner said that they are not being romantic, right? Like, and I'll read, I'll definitely read uh, a little bit of what the showrunners were talking about in regards to Loki and Sylvie, but they said that they were not really, or not necessarily um, attaching a whole romantic thing to their, you know, interactions. But in my opinion, I'm not gonna sit here and act like I think it's so weird and so gross and oh my God, it's so it's so strange that Loki fell in love with himself. Like, I, I don't know, I'm not gonna act, it, it just, it's completely fine to me and I can't sit here and act like I think it's weird because I really don't. <laughs> I just don't, I just don't, they're from alternate universes. Like, girl, they don't know each other. Like, bitch, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. But I'm gonna talk about that a little bit later because I want to recap the entire, or at least some of the main points of the episode. And it starts out with like young Sylvie. And I guess we kind of don't, well, I picked up on it, honestly. Well, at first, maybe I was like, okay, are they doing a young kid Loki that's like a girl? Like, are they changing that shit up? But no, it's a. it was a young Sylvie who they snatched up. I guess she wasn't even supposed to exist. We find that on later, or we find that out later on. Um, she wasn't supposed to even exist. They snatched, TVA snatched her ass up, but she stole the tempad because she's a bad bitch and she, she ran the fuck away from Renslayer ass. You know, so, and then you have Mobius pressing Renslayer on what the fuck happened to the other girl. What's her name? I don't know. It was another, um, what you call it? Like an officer, whatever the fuck they be walking around here in TVA with they, them little bombs and shit, bitch. You already know what I'm talking about. So she was, he was pressing Renslayer. Mobius like, where the fuck is she at? And he wasn't getting no straight answer from her. She ended up telling him that she's dead and that Sylvie killed her. And I was just like, at immediately i was like girl that shit not really making no sense to me like that's just <laughs> that's just not making no sense to me like sylvie sylvie will kill what she needs to kill but it's just like i feel like she her powers she wasn't doing that shit she wasn't doing that shit i don't know how to explain it i was just like okay did sylvie really scramble this bitch brains up like that like that bad to where she didn't die it just didn't make no sense bitch so we switched to them you know, Loki and Sylvie are over here on Lament, whatever the fuck that planet name is, purple ass. I should call it Thanos planet, bitch. <laughs> they on this planet, bitch. And the world, the whole world's about to end. And she ends up telling Loki, like, I think this is where they had the conversation. I got kidnapped. Them whole snatched me the fuck up. And bitch, the whole, the only reason I survived is because I learned that they wouldn't be able to really find me in these like apocalypse situations. You know, and she's like, I've been running my entire life and these bitches keep coming after me. And it really gives a good motivation for why she would be, you know, running around trying to take down the TVA and why they are trying to chase her ass down, all that shit. So here comes the part where people, some people were just like a little bit weirded out. I think they're kind of weirded out in general by like Loki even showing any kind of lusty eyes or you know reaching out to try and hold her ass her hand or being and i'm just like i really don't care i really don't care so apparently because we switched back between them being on a planet and the tva seeing what the hell is happening at a specific point obviously the nexus event where they're at right now and there's like they're like oh have you ever seen a nexus event like that ever you know and so they obviously they know that that's, that's where they at and they come get them and they come save them before the, the two planets collide. So I want to read something really quick from comicbook.com that comes from, well, I mean, they take a lot from what the showrunners say. So they said, as of now, there don't seem to be any plans to establish a romantic link between Loki and Sylvie. Loki episode three, Lamentis toned down the action in exchange for an hour or so of character development of the two tricksters, leading some to believe the character work between the two could potentially lead to a romance as the series moves along. According to Loki Helmer Kate Heron, however, it was never their intention to introduce a romantic relationship between the two. Rather, the writer's room simply wanted to establish a friendship between Loki and Sylvie because neither of them has any friends. For me, it was just about it becoming a character study, not necessarily romantic, but Loki doesn't have any, fr or D Loki doesn't have many friends, you know. He builds this friendship with Mobius across the second episode, Heron told Thrillist in a recent chat. It was really about crafting out characters that by the time they get to the city at the end of the show, they're going to work 
as a team and they have to have gone on a journey and maybe they'll be friends we don't know but at least they are at a point where okay i've got your back in this moment but for me personally like i said i don't think that shit is weird um i don't think i could get with an alternate universe version of myself you know what i mean like alternate reality version of myself if i was like near identical but if i was like hotter and less annoying and cool you know what i mean like smoother and cooler maybe i would bitch if you come from another another universe bitch and you want to get down like bitch let's make out or something you know what i mean let's let's get down let's do some shit let's see what's going let's see what's popping <laughs> i don't think that shit is weird and the first re the the and if we're talking about like some deep shit obviously loki was in the beginning was at a point where he hated himself and the whole point is to get him to love himself you know what i mean and then on top of that what who else do you think loki will fall in love with but him but his goddamn self and it just it seems it just seems it doesn't seem weird to me because they're so different you know like i don't know even if he was the same and he wanted to make out i just i i don't see anything weird or wrong with that shit people are acting like he make out with his fucking blood brother or some shit like girl just sit your ass down bitch and enjoy the show shut the fuck up so anyway <laughs> So anyway, child, they come to get, they come, the TVA come to get their ass. They lock their ass up. And Mobius is like, bitch, you tried me for the last time. He puts him in this time loop thing where he repeatedly, repeatedly has to face Sif because I guess in the past he had cut her hair off or some played a trick on her ass. And she just punches him in the fucking face and knees him in the balls. Um, I mean, continuously on a time loop. That shit was torture. But before he got in there, um, he ended up telling Mobius, girl, the TVA is lying to your ass. And later on, when One Me, <laughs> I love One Me as an actress, she plays Hunter B-15. So when Hunter B-15 came out there and say, you know, talking to Mobius about certain things that really not rubbing her the right way, she asked her, she asked Mobius what Loki said in there. And Mobius said, hey, he said that the TVA is lying to me. He kind of laughs it off. But you can tell that Mobius is like thinking about that shit like, it really did like when loki said that shit first to mobius it really um made him made him think about some shit even if it was subconsciously like but you know hunter b15 b15 says girl i mean you can see on her face after she finds out that loki said that shit to mobius she kind of she was also kind of thinking about that shit too because things are not adding up you know what i mean and so Loki is still in that goddamn time loop, but it was it's only when he admits like, oh, I'm a narcissist and I want people to pay attention to me because I always feel alone. Um, Sif ended up telling him, bitch, you will always be alone. Uh, but this next part here where they're trying, they, it's like they are trying to get each other to tell <laughs> tell the other person the truth. It's, it's like they're playing mind games in here. I do love Tom and Owen Wilson's uh chemistry here it's i mean i love their chemistry throughout the entire show but this scene in particular i love how they play off of each other's actors um but loki ends up telling him the truth like bitch the tva is lying to y'all ass bitch all you hoes are variants and they snatched y'all ass up from the motherfucking timeline bitch and erased y'all memory every time that's why all the, i mean he didn't say this but that's why i remember he was putting his cup down on that damn, you know, you know, I'm and or many rings from it, bitch. You know what I'm talking about. That's what he said. He's like, bitch, they're lying to you. They're lying to you. And Mobius almost don't, Mobius don't believe his ass. And he puts his ass right back in the fucking time loop shit. He puts his ass, he doesn't believe him. Puts him back in the time loop. And before um, he goes in there, Loki says, bitch, you're lying to yourself. And Mobius, you can, you can tell on his motherfucking face that he's really seriously thinking about what this what this man's saying. So Hunter B15 goes into where Sylvie's being held, and she it, she makes it seem like she's finna prune her ass, like she's finna go in there and kill her ass, right? But she turned that pruning stick off and said, "Hey Sylvie, you need to follow me," because obviously, like I said, she's been really having doubts of her own, and she wants to find the truth. She she, she wants to find out the truth. So we move on to the next scene with Mobius and Renslayer talking to each other. And Mobius is really trying to press Miss Mamas for answers on specific questions. And Renslayer is just like really beating around the bush. She's not giving him straight answers. And Mobius can tell, he can, he can see right through all that bullshit. So what he does is while she's over there switching them damn swords and shit and knives and shit, whatever the fuck they was doing. Um, he picked up that damn temp pad and switched it out for hers and, and started, and he just, he's going to find the motherfucking truth out. So Hunter and, and Sylvie are out here in front of this damn rocks car in the rain. 
which I think represents so much if you really think about it. And here is where we find some like really cool information, right? So the first time that we were introduced to Lady Loki when she was enchanting and taking over the minds of all them damn people while trying to, you know, fuck with Loki, it, like she ends up, we end up learning that Hunter, while she was enchanted for a little bit, ended up seeing some of her, me her old memories or some shit, like her old life. Um, and Hunter was like, I just want to know that I want to know the truth. Did you enchant me? Did you, did you put them shits in my head? And we learn more about Sylvie's power. Sylvie cannot really implant memories in your shit. She can only use what's already there. And, you know, Hunter's like, Sh well, show me mama, show me boo. And she ends up showing her and she's like, well, what now? Bitch, when they came out, I was like, I know they got a plan. I know they got a plan. I know they got a plan. They better have a plan. Um, so we move on to the next scene where Mobius is looking at the temp pad for like Renslayer's temp pad and she, he sees everything, bitch. He see the old, he see old girl over there saying when she was repeating, oh, it's real. It's real. She was talking about her memories. She was talking about the fact that she had a life before the TVA came along. She said she used to go to always used to go to that restaurant. Remember when Sylvie had enchanted her, they were sitting talking like they were best buddies and she was trying to see where the timekeepers were. Um, and then we see Renslayer pop up in the goddamn recorder, Miss Mamas! We see, we see Renslayer pop up in the corner. We was like, it, it, it's just an absolute mess. So he figures out that Loki's telling the truth. So he goes to get Loki and then they come out, bitch. As soon as they come out, as soon as they come out, I'm just like, Mama, you didn't think this shit through. You should have had a plan. Ho. If you're going to take somebody temp pad, they're going to notice that it's not theirs the moment that they pick that shit up. So, like, why didn't you have a plan? But whatever, as soon as he came out of that time loop with Loki to rescue him, basically saying, bitch, like, I believe you. We got to go take down the TVA, bitch. And your weirdo love thing with with uh, Miss Girl, with Sylvie, can probably take the whole thing down with a fucking ne Nexus event or whatever. As soon as they bring their ass out that goddamn time loop hole. <laughs> Renslayer is waiting there like she is fucking Cersei with the, with the Queen's Guard, bitch. Like she's waiting there and they had they prune sticks on hold. That's what I'm calling it. I don't know what the fuck you call it, bitch. I'm calling it prune sticks, bitch. They had their prune sticks on. Ren Slayer was like, get his ass, get his ass, get his ass, bitch. I was like, are they really finna kill him? Are they really finna kill him? Are they really finna, they really finna kill him? They really finna, I was like, no, not Mobius, bitch, not Mobius, bitch. You could tell Loki was all, you know, fucked up about that shit, bitch. I was like, are you serious? And I was like, why don't they just prune Loki ass? But bitch, the timekeepers had apparently wanted to, you know, see over Loki and Sylvie's pruning themselves. So I guess so nothing would be messed up or messed up or whatever. But bitch, so they taking their ass, bitch. They taking their ass to the timekeepers. And I found this really interesting because when they were in the elevator, Sylvie asked Renslayer if she remembers her. And Renslayer says, no. She's like, no. And she find, and, and well... Does she say, I think she said what, what the, the question that really got underneath Sylvie's skin was, do you remember the Nexus event that urged the TVA, I think, to take me, to kidnap me, to, to you know, and Renslayer smiles and then she says, no, it's, it's like she loves the fact that she does not remember, she does not know, she does not give a fuck about none of the variant, like none of the ass, bitch. And I already don't like her ass. I already don't like, I really don't like her ass after what she did to Mobius, bitch. So now that she's smiling in the elevator and, and smiling at Sylvie's pan, I was like, bitch, you really need to, you, you need to get your ass beat. You need to get your ass beat. So they on this elevator, they open up them golden ass doors, bitch, this, this fog and shit. I mean, the timekeeper sitting up there looking like some, I don't even know what they look like, bitch. Like they give me very much animatronic, like Chuck E. Cheese ass fucking mascots, bitch, sitting in, these, in this chair, bitch. I'm like, okay, they don't have no powers or anything. Like, how are they going to get out of this situation, bitch? Then Hunter B-15 come in there, bitch. Then she come in there, whole. She come in there and she pressed that little button, bitch. And she got, she, she got her ass beat a little bit. She got her ass beat, but she saved the damn day, bitch. She saved the day, bitch. She, she gave them girls their abilities back, bitch, and their ability to fight. And they were in their boxing hole they were getting down bitch now let me tell you something about when you are fighting okay when you're fighting and especially in superhero shows and you gotta fucking fight you fight one of these villains bitch don't just knock their ass out if you're just gonna knock their ass out then you need to restrain them whole 
You need to restrain them. If you're gonna knock their ass out, restrain them. But bitch, as soon as she knocked her ass out and just left her there and didn't kill her, I was like, yeah, she finna, she finna wake back up when y'all least expect it. And then, but even knowing that, like even when knowing that shit, I still did not expect for Loki to be pruned whole. <laughs> I did not expect that shit at all, bitch. Like she came out of nowhere. And I'm seeing like Loki all of a sudden like moving and shifting and his chest is glowing. So I'm like, oh, maybe he using his powers or some shit. Bitch, no, he was being erased whole. And this was after Sylvie had tossed that sword up there or whatever the fuck um, on the TV, on the um, timekeepers and found out after chopping one of their heads off that they were robots so someone's obviously controlling them they started laughing when the main one got this got his head chopped off so obviously the the thing is still going and there are many there are many theories about who they think is um in charge of all of this like who's the ringleader and all this shit and it, i mean it's from I, I just think because of all the rumors because of jonathan majors and all that shit it's giving me very much kang the conqueror Give me very much Kang. I would like to see what y'all think about that shit. Also, we have to remember that this show is called Loki. So there probably are characters that we're looking at dead in our faces right now who are like disguised. Maybe they are Loki um, acting as someone else or shapeshifted into someone else. And we just won't know until the show continues until we get a big reveal or something like that. So it could be any, it could be anybody in control of these things, anybody from Canada Conqueror to Loki himself. So I'm just really interested to see where they're gonna take this shit. They had a post credit scene where we had a whole bunch of Lokis looking at the show Loki after he wakes up, you know? So I'm wondering what all that is about based off of some of the videos and research that I've, videos I've watched and research I've done is given very much a timeline where they just discard um you know variants that don't need to be in maybe it's like a pocket dimension where they discard variants that don't need to be in this in the main sacred timeline or that, that they feel don't need to be in the main sacred timeline this also brings up the question of what exactly do those prune sticks do because obviously because because i thought that them holes was dead i thought loki was dead ho, after she, he got pruned but obviously he was just transported somewhere you see what i'm saying so it's like what the fuck does what the fuck do those sticks do and if that's the case if loki was transported somewhere does that that probably means we're gonna see mobius again you know so i don't know the, the, this fucking episode was so good and the action was so good that i'm just like and and tom i think tom himself was just like i think it was asked i don't know what what his favorite episode was or which one he was most excited for but he did say four and five so i i can't wait to see what comes after this shit I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. And uh, please keep it coming, period.